My name is Bonnie Way, and I'm so delighted to be here with you today. I hope that my experience of motherhood can inspire and encourage you on your journey as a mom. I've been a mom for almost 12 years now, and I have five kids. I also homeschool my kids, so I'm with them every day. And I want to say that motherhood is the most amazing job that I have ever done. It is beautiful, and it is totally worth it, but it is also hard. There are a lot of parts of motherhood that are really difficult, and I'm not going to say I'm a perfect mom. There are days when I yell at my kids. There are days when I want to lock myself in my room and cry. There are days when I just wish I could put them all back in school. But there are also days when we have a lot of fun together. There are days when I absolutely love what I do, and there are days when I couldn't wish for a better job. And so if you're in the trenches right now and you're struggling with being a mom and your decision to become a mom, I just want to encourage you and to say, yes, it's hard, but it is totally worth it. And an analogy that came to me recently is something that I did. This summer I had the chance to hike the West Coast Trail with my cousin and another friend of mine. And the West Coast Trail is a 75 kilometer trail along the West Coast of Vancouver Island. It is known for being a rugged, really hard trail, but it is also amazingly beautiful. And in six days, we hiked an average of 15 kilometers a day while carrying 35 pounds on our backs. And like I said, it was absolutely amazing. It was beautiful. We had sunny weather the whole time. We were walking beside the ocean. We saw some amazing scenery. And yes, it was also difficult because we were carrying heavy packs and we were climbing ladders and we were walking in shifting sand. And, you know, motherhood is kind of like that. There are parts about it that are so amazing, like the first moment that you see your baby's face or, you know, the first word or the first step. And there are parts about it that are really, really difficult, like labor or, you know, not getting enough sleep as a mom and so many other things. And so I just want to say that, yeah, it's hard, but it's worth it. And so I hope that this video and the other videos here in this summit can encourage you and inspire you. And I have three tips that I would like to give you as a mom today. How can you flourish as a mom? What helps me to keep going, you know, 12 years in, five kids, homeschooling, and all the rest of that? And first, I want to say, find other moms. Moms need moms, and this has been so apparent to me in my 12 years as a mom. When I first became a mom, I was actually the first among my friends, my group of friends, to get married and to have a kid. And my friends, they were still working their careers, and so here I was, a new mom at home in my one-bedroom apartment with my new baby, and my, my friends were all off teaching and working their careers and we get together and it was like there was this huge gap between us. I had this new baby at home and I was trying to figure out how I could do the laundry while holding her in one arm or whether I should wash the dishes or take everybody's advice and just go have a nap with the baby. And my friends are trying to figure out, you know, stuff in the classroom and their new wardrobe for the fall for starting to teach again. And we just had this humongous gap. And years later, one of my friends became a mom and she emailed me and she said, Bonnie, I had no idea what you needed back then. And I said, it's okay. I, I know that you didn't know. And I didn't know back then as a new mom what I needed either. There was one time, I think it was about a week after we'd had our first baby and friends of my husband's dropped by. They said, we're going to bring a meal over and we're just going to drop it off. And my husband and I were kind of like, well, that's weird. And we tried to invite them in and they're like, no, we're just dropping the meal off. And so they literally just dropped the meal off and they left again. But they were parents. They had two kids and they knew just what a what an amazing um, uplifting experience it is to have a meal delivered to you when you're a new mom and I, I didn't know that we didn't know that as new parents we didn't know how hard it was to cook or how to take care of ourselves or even our friends who are having babies and it wasn't until I had my third in a community surrounded by moms and one of the moms there arranged I think um, no maybe that wasn't when they arranged a meal train it was later with my fourth and fifth babies that we had the privilege of being part of a meal train but it was yeah with my third and my fourth and my fifth babies our friends who've had, who are moms and who've had babies, they dropped off food for us. And I didn't cook for the first week or two as a new mom. And that was just, that was humongous. That was such a, a relief to me as a new mom just to be able to focus on my baby and not to worry about what I was feeding fam my family. And so I want to say to you, whether you're a new mom or you know, you've been a mom for a few years, find other moms. You may have lots of friends like I did when I was, first became a mom, but if they're not mom friends, they don't know what you're going through and you need mom friends. You need friends who know what you're going through that you can call up and say, the baby didn't sleep last night and they know what it's like. Or, you know, whatever you're going through. Maybe the baby's teething. Maybe the baby won't breastfeed. Maybe, you know, so many things are happening. Maybe your mom friend has some tips or advice or something she can tell you to try that work for her. Or maybe she can just be there as a listening ear because she knows that motherhood is tough and that you just need somebody to talk to during this time. So I want to encourage you, I know making new friends uh, can be tough, but I want to encourage you to, if you need to, find some new mom friends. Um, you can find 
friends through a church group, through community centers, maybe even just at the playground, strike up a new conversation. I found that, you know, so many times being a mom is what unites me with many of my mom friends. We have our kids in common and we have the, the, the path that we're on together as moms, you know, trying to raise our kids, dealing with the toddler years and the baby years and that, you know, so many other things, the homeschooling, all of that. And so having another mom there who can encourage me and support me in this journey has made such a huge difference in my life as a mom. My next tip for you is to find something that you love, find what fulfills you. And this may not be motherhood. Um, I know, like I said, motherhood is awesome, but as moms, we, we can't always just be moms. We need to be something else too. And I love um, Jennifer Fallweiler is a fellow mom of five kids and she's written an amazing book called One Beautiful Dream in which she talks about finding her blue spark. And so she says, this is her something that you love to do. And you know, as moms, so often we put everything into our kids and we just focus on them and what they need and we might hide our blue spark or bury our blue spark. And often that just leaves us burnt out and exhausted and then we wonder why motherhood is no fun and why we're so glummy and depressed all the time. And Jennifer Fywilder talks about in her book, um, struggling to, to find time to exercise her blue flame or to let her blue frame ex expand and light and shine for others. And that's something that I have also struggled with as a mom. You know, yeah, it is easy to get caught up in our kids and in their needs and to ignore ourselves. And there's a lot about self-care on the internet, but self-care is about more than just, you know, taking a break and reading a book or going for a pedicure or something like that. I really believe that as moms, we also need to have a creative outlet. Um, for me, that creative outlet is blogging and writing. I've been a writer since I was a teenager. And as a mom, that has, that has become my outlet. So I can sit down at my blog and I can write something that lasts longer than the dishes or the laundry and it stays there. It doesn't, you know, get undone the next second as the kids spill the toys that I just cleaned up. So blogging is my creative outlet. That's something that I can do that lets me express myself. It lets me feel like I'm using my brain as a mom. It lets me reach out to other moms and connect with other moms and hopefully inspire other moms like this does. Other moms that I know um, do other things. I have a friend of mine, she's an artist and she creates absolutely amazing work as an artist. Even when her husband is away with the military, she's still able to find time at night when the kids are in bed that she can pursue her dream and create her art and fulfill that blue spark for her. And so I just want to encourage you to think about what it is that you love. Maybe it's something that you did before the kids came along, or maybe it's something else, a new hobby that you're going to take up now as a mom. I know so many moms who've discovered something new, a new passion after becoming moms, and they've chased that. You know, maybe they've become business owners or authors or different things uh, since becoming moms. And so that's amazing. And I want you to, yeah, find that and to find ways that you can do that, whether you have to do it while the baby naps or after the baby goes to bed or ask your husband if you can have one night out a week to do that or you know maybe swap childcare with another mom friend so that you can both pursue your blue flame um, whatever it takes find something that fulfills you and just lifts you up as a mom so that you can then you know if your tank is full and you feel fulfilled and happy you can put more into your kids and the last tip that I want to give you is to recognize the seasons of motherhood you know we all know that Pregnancy is nine months, more or less, and, and then it ends and you have a new baby. Um, but sometimes it's harder to recognize the other two seasons of motherhood. We may feel like, you know, we're going to have this colicky baby forever or we're going to have this tantruming toddler forever. And, you know, as a mom now with an almost 12 year old, I can see how she's grown and changed. And, you know, I can kind of look forward a little bit because she's there in her stages and dealing with her things while I'm still dealing with her brother who's an almost two year old and you know he's still throwing tantrums because I told him he can't sit, hit his sister with his toy and so I have this I guess because I have five kids this bigger perspective of the seasons of motherhood and you know I want to encourage you know maybe right now maybe you can't do your blue flame you know I'm, I'm a writer right now I can blog but I can't write a novel and I would love to be writing novels I have lots of novel ideas but that's not something that I can do with five kids running around the house or while I'm homeschooling and so that's something that I've just had to accept is gonna go on the back burner for now the novels stay on my computer my ideas stay in my head and you know someday my kids are gonna grow up I won't be homeschooling them forever and then I will have a chance to get back to my novels and until then I can pursue other creative outlets like my blog you know I can write short things right now and and focus on that and on the kids and and wait for this seasons to change and you know they, they do change kids grow up faster than we think so just if you're in a, a difficult season right now I just want to encourage you to hang in there and to say that it is gonna get better and you can do this 
So finally, I want to say you are a good mom and you are doing an important job. And I think that's something that we don't hear enough as moms. Um, you know, social media tells us so often that we're not, we're not doing good enough. We're not, you know, our house isn't as clean as somebody else's or our kids aren't well behaved or we're, we're bad moms for, for being on social media in the first place. And so I want to say you are a good mom. You're here today listening to this. So that means that you, you are putting effort into yourself, into your kids, into being a good mom. And you are doing an important job. I mean, our kids are the next generations. They are world changers. And so you, you are the one who is, who are changing the world by raising your children. And that, that is important. That matters. And so I just want to encourage you to, you know, go back to your kids, hug your kids, find your blue spark, find your mom friends, enjoy the season that you're in. And um, I hope that this has inspired you and I would love to have you come check out my blog. I write at thekoalamom.com about motherhood, tips and advice, my own journey as a mom. Music